Hello, Professor Laird here, and welcome to the Spring 2023 Online Political Ideologies class. This is our first video, which uh, will be watched on, you should be watching it on Wednesday, January 18th, first day of class, as uh, you've been sent some information already. But today we'll be getting into the syllabus in detail. So let's go ahead and get started on that. First of all, let's get into Moodle, which will be the operating platform that we'll be conducting the class in. This is your first page of Moodle when you get into the course. This is the introduction section. Of course, as the weeks go by, it will open up in those particular weeks. But here's where we are as far as the, uh, the opening section. This is the introduction here that I've already posted. I've also sent you an announcement as well that kind of uh, summarizes how the, the course will work. I'm going to treat this as much as I possibly can like a classroom class. For many reasons, I've been doing this for quite a while, and there's, there's reasons for this. The uh, video lectures will be posted each Monday and Wednesday morning. So we'll get into that, the specifics here in a minute. Let's, here's on the introduction play, page. This is our syllabus right here. So let's get into the syllabus. Zoom in on that a bit. All right, here's my email, rlaird at bergen.edu. That is the best way to get a hold of me. And I will be available to have video conferences. We'll talk about the class video conferences here in a minute. But if you need an individual video conference, we can do that, particularly on Mondays and Wednesdays. That's Those days are dedicated to my online classes. So that'll be the best time to do that through WebEx. There's the help desk. If you're having any difficulties at all with your equipment, with the uh, getting into Moodle, figuring out how to negotiate this online class, call the help desk as soon as possible. Keep me informed. You have to be plugged in, proactive, stay engaged in this course in order to do well at it. There's a trade-off. You're getting the convenience of having this online course where you everything's a little bit more condensed and you don't have to drive to the class, but it's actually putting more burden on you to stay engaged, be, be proactive, and keep up with this material. Otherwise, you're not going to do well in the class. I can't stress that enough, so keep that in mind because I'll probably stress it a few more times. Now, this class will be focusing on the ideologies that have did not, uh, dominated world politics over the past couple of centuries. Now, there's no prere prerequisite for this class, but it would be, I guess, uh, probably beneficial if you've had an intro to politics or an American government class prior to this to give you a little bit better foundation of the process and the system of government. Here we're going to be focusing on the political ideologies. Now, as far as the textbooks go, the primary textbook for the class, I'm showing it here. Political Ideologies and the Democratic Ideal by Ball, Dagger, and O'Neill. This is required. Most of the lectures of the class, as you'll notice when we look at the schedule here in a minute, most of the lectures come directly from this book for the most part. Now, I've got several supplemental lectures that are interspersed in between, as well as other material that I've gathered over the years. But this is the primary guideline. And if you read this book, you will be well ahead of the game and know more than uh, very much more than the average person about political ideologies. The other book is optional. I would highly recommend it, particularly if you're a political science or a social science major, because this book is chock full of very well-known, famous, landmark, infamous, whatever, essays of uh, some very prominent philosophers, thinkers, politicians, whatever. It's just crammed full of really good readings. Now, the reason why I'm saying it's optional is because 
the ones that I'm going to assign to you for a discussion form or for part of the class assignment, I can post them on Moodle and then you can read them off of Moodle. But uh, I would still highly recommend that uh, this you add this book to your library because this book would be timeless. It's got uh, articles that go way back all the way to uh, Plato and Aristotle. So, uh, and we will be reading several of them in the class. Now, another thing that we will be doing in this class, I will be uh, posting, like I said, these supplemental articles. You'll want to keep up with current events, world politics. This will be beneficial to selecting your paper topic that we'll go over here in a few minutes. Uh, there, another thing that's very important, particularly to your paper, is that we will learn about peer-reviewed academic journals. They are so important that I even have my own acronym for them, PROJ, peer-reviewed academic journals. This is where the studies, whether it's biological, environmental, political studies, they go, they go through the peer review process and they're published in these journals. You have access to thousands of these journals and hundreds of thousands of articles by being a, a student here so that you'll have access to these to use for your paper. And we'll get into that a little bit more later on today. I'm just going to touch a little bit on the paper assignment, but then we'll, we'll uh, cover more on that as we go. But uh, the introducing you to peer-reviewed academic journals, the importance of them, how to find them, that will be part of the course as well. Now, as far as your online course of participation, this is the most important thing that you'll need to soak in for today's video. This is not going to be a self-paced course. You have to keep up on a daily basis. You can't just expect to sit around for a couple of weeks and then peek into the course and say, okay, what did I miss? I'll catch up, no big deal. It ain't gonna work that way. Sorry about that. The, uh, the way that the course is designed is that the video lectures will be posted each Monday and Wednesday morning. They'll be posted by seven o'clock, usually earlier. You will watch that video all the way through in its entirety. Once you do that, then you'll be able to go to the discussion forum for that day that may be uh, something fairly simple for you to respond to that could pertain to that lecture or pertain to a general idea for that day at day's lecture. It will not really take you very long to respond to this uh, discussion forum, but I'll be looking for some insight at times to um, that you may have picked up something from the lecture that might be worth sharing. But the uh, most important thing, of course, is that you will be required to watch that lecture, watch the video lecture all the way through in its entirety before you go to the discussion forum. If you don't do that, that would be a form of cheating because as you'll see here in a minute, I'm using the discussion forums to determine attendance for the class. And if you skip over the video lecture to go in there and try to be counted attendance, that's a form of cheating. You can't do that. You have to watch the video lecture all the way through in its entirety before you go to the discussion forum. That needs to be very clearly understood. If you can't do that, if you can't negotiate that within that day's time, you'd probably want to look at a different course. As I said, the video lectures will be posted by 7 a.m. The discussion forums will come a little bit later so that you'll have some uh, leeway there to watch the, the video lectures, but you'll have all day to watch the video lecture and respond to the forum. But the forum, I probably won't post them until around noon or so. So here's the deadline. You will want to watch that video first all the way through in its entirety. Then you will just respond to the discussion forum, which shouldn't take you more than five or 10 minutes at the most to discuss to, to respond to the discussion forum. And you'll have until 9 p.m. that evening, whether it's Monday or Wednesday, those are their class days. 
they'll have until 9 p.m. that evening in which to respond to that discussion forum, and then you will be counted present for that day. And then we'll move on to the next lecture on the next class day. So we'll be doing that every Mondays and Wednesdays, just as you would be in a classroom class. It's just now you get to watch the lecture. It's, it's your own convenience on your own computer. You're going to want working computers in order to uh, navigate the course. Now, this is extremely important. In order to try to make this class more interactive, because it's very disconnected, and that's one of the biggest problems with it, I will be requiring you to attend weekly video conferences that will be no more than about 30 minutes. And one of your first assignments in the class, a group assignment, I'll set up a forum for it. You will get together with your classmates and determine what time, either on a Monday or on a, or on a Wednesday, what time, 30 minute window, that will have these weekly video conferences. That way I can field questions, see if there's any problems. I can alert you to what's going on that week just to stay a little bit more active. This is required. If you can't do it, don't take the course. Once y'all decide on what that 30 minute window is, and it can be all day Monday and all day Wednesday because those are the days that I'm dedicating to my online courses. So I'm completely flexible for you to set up a time slot. When that happens, then I will send you a WebEx invitation to join the meeting each week. And then we will use that as part of our participation as well to stay a little bit more interactive in the course. Attendants will be taken through those discussion forums. As I said, fail to respond by that 9 p.m. deadline, you'll be absent for that day. Now, just like I would be doing in a regular course, if you miss the discussion forum, you're absent for that day, that will be five points deducted from your attendance grade, just like I would in the classroom. If you're if I have a classroom class, people that are absent, it's five points off. So if you miss three classes for the entire semester, your participation grade stands at a baseline of 85. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, a discussion forum could also have points deducted for failing to follow instructions or repeating what has already been posted. So you're going to want to re uh, read the previous post before you respond. You know, this will vary from forum to forum, but for the most part, I'm going to want individual responses that are, uh, you know, uh, you know, giving me some insight as to what you've learned that day and that you don't want to just uh, repeat what somebody else has said. So you've got to kind of read what's already been posted so that we can spread out the variety of responses. Now, obviously, you'll be counted absent if you don't watch that video lecture all the way through before responding. Very important because that would be a form of cheating if you do that. Got to watch the video lecture just like you'd be going to class and sitting through the class and I count you present. Got to do the same thing for the video lecture. I'm trying to make this as interactive as possible, but you have the responsibility to be proactive to get engaged in the class. Now your total attendance grade will make up 15% of the course grade. That's just how I do it in my classroom classes as well. That's a, a pretty decent chunk there that if you just abuse it, it will, uh, it will lower your grade, a full letter grade than what you're expecting if you just blow off the attendance. Plus, uh, I shouldn't have to uh, explain this, but um, if you don't attend the class, a la if you don't watch the video lectures, you're going to fail the tests and you're not going to do well in the course. Like I said, the forum will be closed at the 9 p.m. deadline. If you miss it, you miss it. Just like if you miss a class, I can't go through a time machine and make, make the time come back so you can go to class. No, time has passed. We move on. So students will not be sending me emails telling me that, oh, I... I forgot or I missed the class or I was on the way home or whatever. Uh, you got to you got to plan this out, folks. 
you're going to have until seven o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock at night in which to watch a video and respond to a discussion forum. You're going to have a 14 hour window in which to watch a 35 to 40 minute lecture. If you can't negotiate that, don't take the course. It's that simple. You, we, I'm laying it out for you. You can plan it all out. You're going to have a nine hour window in which to respond to a, a five minute discussion forum. If you're unable to do that, then this class is not a priority to you. And uh, that's another thing that I will stress to all my students to, in all my classes is that the college course needs to be a priority. I know we've all got other things going on and some of you got jobs, part-time jobs, but uh, the college course should be your top priority because that's what you're shooting for in the future. If you're taking a job, if you're in a job right now that you're going to be happy with in 15 or 20 years, then why bother taking the college course, right? So uh, again, I we, we can discuss this during our weekly video conferences as well, get you some, get some feedback on that. But um, you're certainly going to want to uh, be very proactive, engaged, uh, give this course the priority that it deserved uh, that so you can get your college degree. Now, the, uh, the discussion forum might also be a group exercise. In fact, one of the early assignments that I just mentioned will be a group assignment for you to choose amongst yourselves. I'll open up a forum for it to uh, what that 30-minute uh, window will be either on Monday or Wednesday for our weekly meetings. Now, as far as communication policy, read this. It's very uh, common sense, but the main thing is that you will want to check your bergen.edu uh, email every day. It's very important. All my communications, all the announcements are going to your school email. All of your correspondence should be coming from your school email. And that's uh, really required by the school so that we don't have other emails coming in from other sources. But um, you want to be plugged into your bergen.edu school email. Check that on a daily basis. Again, stay plugged in to the course. Now, this is your, your netiquette behavior here. So read that that as far as uh, how we will be behaving for the online course. Now, before I talk about tests, I just wanted to mention here, it, it may sound like that I'm not from around here, and uh, you'd be right, I actually from Texas. However, I, I never wear a hat. That's, that's just a prop. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Yes, whenever I say y'all, or uh, I'm fixing to, that's a dead giveaway. But yes, I am from Texas. All right, now let's talk about tests. There'll be three online tests uh, during the course covering about five chapters each. Now the three tests will be 20% each, accounting for 60% of the total grade. Now, this being an online course, we've got some specifications here that we've got to uh, adhere to. The tests will be open book and open note, but they are going to be timed. And they're timed for a reason so that uh, students are encouraged to be very prepared for the test. You're not going to have time to look up the answers. You'll have 35 minutes to complete that test in one sitting. As I said, you'll need to be prepared, and I'll provide a study guide for you that will help you prepare for the test in order to focus in on the main points that we, we discussed for that particular section. You'll want to be prepared before this, for this test before you start it, as you will not have time to look up the answers during the test. Now, on the day of the test, of course, it will be either on a Monday or Wednesday as well. I'll post that test, open it up around noon, and then you'll have until 9 p.m. in which to take that test in one sitting 35 minute window, which means that you'll have to start the test at least by 825 so that you'll have that full 35 minutes to take that test because at 9 p.m. the test will shut down. Now, 
as, as you're taking the test, it will be on auto submit, but you'll want to uh, pay careful attention to your answers and make sure your answers is submitted. What the test does is it shuts off after 35 minutes and what you've already put in there automatically gets submitted, but you'll want to be diligent. If the uh, class re requested, I could actually set up just a practice test uh, with uh, just nonsense stuff on it so that you can go in there and, and make sure that you know how to negotiate the test before we actually take our first test. That might be a good exercise. That's something that you can bring up during our weekly video conferences if you want to just a test run to make sure that everybody knows how to negotiate the test. It's pretty straightforward and some of you I'm sure have already had them already. All right now as far as the test goes it's going to be a variety of questions because I, I spread it out so that I, I reward the students that are the most prepared. So you've got multiple choice, matching, fill in the blank, true, false, short answer, and then every test will have at least two short essay questions where you don't necessarily have to elaborate like you would in a classroom class because we've got a time limit. So you're going to want to be very prepared. I will give you sample essay questions before the test that you can prepare for so that when the test comes around, you'll already be uh, have a good idea of, of how you want to answer that, uh, that short essay question with a healthy paragraph that's telling me that you're you've learning you're learning what we're talking about so again the short essay questions will require you to demonstrate a fundamental understanding of what is being asked in your own words in complete sentences this is very important if you just copy and paste or just regurgitate a list of bullet points or phrases that are in the lecture side lecture slides that will not be adequate you can't just copy and paste stuff because when i see that I have no idea whether or not that student understands what they're copying and pasting. So this is why it's extremely important that you not only watch the videos in their entirety, that you take notes during the videos because taking notes will give you a more full preparation for the test questions because that's what you're going to want to do on the tests is give me a fuller answer that demonstrates that you've watched the video and that you understand what we're talking about in class rather than just copying and pasting and, and uh, regurgitating phrases and bullet points on there because that's not telling me that you understand what you've uh, what you're pasting there so taking notes will help you to give fuller answers on the test as well as i said don't copy and paste anything taking notes will increase the information a student has available to them for their test preparation. Another thing that I have discovered over the past couple of years that I have to tell students, the answers to your tests do not come from Google. I repeat, do not Google your test questions or when you get your study guide, don't Google those terms and phrases. The answers to your test questions are going to be on the lectures. That's the reason why I'm here is to give you this information so that you will have it all ready for you to um, demonstrate on the test. So once again, do not Google it. You want to get your test answers. You want to prepare for the test from the lectures. Now, Unfortunately, our first day here with the going through the syllabus, there's lots of rules and regulations and requirements, but unfortunately, I've got to get that out right up front of what's required of you, even more particularly for this online, because we've got this disconnection here. We've got to be very clear on what is required of you. Now, obviously, staying engaged in the class is extremely important because if you just miss a test, most in many cases students just are not keeping up and they forget the test is that day obviously they didn't prepare for it if they forgot about it but if you just don't show up for a test just like in the classroom if you don't show up for a test without any prior notice without any communication whatsoever that will be a zero and there, there's just no makeups from that you've got to be paying attention you've got to be proactive 
I will show you the schedule here in a minute and you will know exactly what days the tests are on. You'll know it right today. In fact, you probably already know it if you've looked at the syllabus already. Put those on your calendar. You cannot just miss a test, not show up. Once I grade the test and post the uh, answers to the test, usually before the next class day, obviously that would not be fair to the other students for, for a student to be able to go in and, and take that test. And you're actually rewarding that student for not keeping up or not paying attention. So that just not going to happen. So you're going to have to um, be proactive in that as well. Now, the uh, as I already kind of mentioned here, there's no makeups or extra credit or extensions on any of your tests. I'm trying to lay it out to you that you've got some uh, a little bit more responsibilities on your end in order to take this online course. So um, that's why I'm, I've got to get this out up front. Like I said, grades will be available with feedback typically before the next class day. Now, if you have accommodations, you need to get those to me as soon as possible. And you can't certainly can't uh, wait until test day to let me know that you have accommodations because that could particularly gum up the works uh, or delay things. So let, let me know as soon as possible. Get me that official paperwork if you've got any accommodations. All right, now let's talk just a little bit about the paper assignment. I'm not going to go over it in uh, much detail today because we will be progressively, uh, I'll be feeding you as we go as far as the paper assignment. What you'll want to be doing right off the bat is start thinking about a topic that you would like to write about. And the topic will be a combination of two things. It will be some ideology or movement or some sort of uh, uh, political uh, issue that has to do with um, ideology that is occurring in some specific region of the world. So your paper topic will be kind of twofold. And I'll give you a list of ideologies and isms to choose from. You'll start to see what I mean very quickly on the very first lecture when we start talking about some of these uh, basic concepts that I'll be introducing you to. But you'll want to focus not only on some particular ideological element or ism out there, but you'll want to focus on a particular group or region or movement somewhere in the world and kind of put those two together for your paper topic. So you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about there once we get into this and I'll post my list. Uh, so don't worry about that right now. As far as the requirements, the first thing I'll need is a one half page paper summary that will be due on Wednesday, February 22nd. The formats for all of your paper assignments, which will be attached to Moodle on a forum that I'll set up, the formats will always be the same. Double spaced, 12 point font, Times New Roman, one inch margins. This will be even for your one half page paper summary as well as your, your full paper. Con consistency is very important for these types of things so that I'm getting the same thing from all the students. The summary will just simply describe what it is that you want to write about. And then you'll see my when I post my list of paper topics, you'll, you'll understand what it is I'm going to need from you. You'll also be useful to include one credible news source in your summary there that has helped inform you a little bit about that topic to kind of get you started on it. Uh, I'll show you fairly early on as far as how to access peer review journals. So you could even start looking for some of those as well. Now, the uh, again, as part of the requirements here, uh, I, I do run a fairly tight ship and I'm fairly demanding as far as on schedule goes, but that, that shouldn't be surprising to you because uh, uh, guess what? Get used to it. You're going to be uh, dealing with that for the rest of your life, meeting deadlines and following instructions. So might as well start get, getting used to it now. You might be asked to resubmit your summary if it's vague or unclear, not specific, or if other students are already looking at that same topic. So we've got a fairly small class, so we're going to be able to spread out our topics pretty easily. 
Now, there's no penalty for that. I just want to make sure that we get these topics in as soon as possible and get them uh, locked in as far as your clarity is what you're going to be focusing on. And everybody's focusing on something a little bit different. And that topic needs to be approved before moving on to the next phase of preparing for your paper. So that's why you want to get them in on the day they're to do. I'll get your feedback to you very quickly and then we'll be good to go on that topic as soon as we can after February 22nd. Now your paper itself, there'll be some other things that I'll be asking for in between such as maybe a sample bibliography or a, a few sample peer-reviewed sources that you found so that we know how to look for them and how to cite them correctly. I'll be asking for those things. You'll see that here in the schedule here shortly. But uh, the paper itself, I'm only asking for four and a half pages minimum. So it's not going to be a long paper, but you're going to want to put some time and effort into it because it needs to be a, uh, a concise paper that's giving me a lot of inter interesting information. So uh, it, it won't necessarily be a long paper, but you're going to want it to be uh, densely packed with really interesting stuff. That paper will be due on Monday, April 26th. Again, the, uh, that, this four and a half page does not include your reference page. I'll be giving you specific instructions on how to uh, cite your sources. So that will be progressively coming along as well. Again, uh, all writing assignments will be attached to a forum in Moodle. And uh, if I haven't mentioned this yet already, I'll need them in a Word file. That's universal enough that everybody should be able to do that. I can even send you a very simple little format to uh, change anything that you're doing into a Word file, but they need to be consistent because with a Word file, I can use that comment feature and give you my comments in that right hand column over there and then email it back to you. So it's a fairly handy little tool to use. So that's why I will need them in a Word file. Again, the format's the same, double space, 12 point font, Times New Roman, one inch margins. Minimum of six references for your paper. This is very important. At least four of those will need to be peer reviewed academic journals. So these peer-reviewed sources are what I would say would be the heart of your paper. The foundation of your paper is going to be these very legitimate, credible uh, peer-reviewed sources. We're going to be talking about these uh, as we go. I'll even post a, uh, a separate video on peer-reviewed academic journals. The, it's a, it's, they're not perfect, but it's the, one of the best systems that we have for trying to get credible, legitimate information to the best of what we know as far as those particular topics go. So that's why I'm kind of using these as the, uh, the baseline for your papers. Now, another important point to make here is that your paper will be an objective critical analysis of whatever ideology, whatever movement, whatever ism it is that you're talking about in that particular region of the world. This will not be an opinion paper. It will not be a editorial. You will stay as analytically as you can possibly get. I'll, I'll provide guidance on that as we go, but this is part of the learning process. Anybody can spout their opinions. You don't need to go to college for that. What we're going to be learning in this class is how to objectively analyze that topic with unbiased sources as far as trying to understand what it is that's going on. So the, uh, the idea is to demonstrate what you've learned from your readings, not tell me what you think about stuff, because that's what we normally do anyway. So what we're going to do is, is focus on finding good sources, reading a lot about that topic, and then describing to me what you've learned in your own words in an interesting, informative manner. That is powerful stuff when you go through that process and accomplish that. Uh, that means that learning has occurred, particularly from what you've read and then being able to craft it in your own words and then put it in a critical, unbiased, objective analysis of that topic. There's reasons for doing that and why I require it that way. 
Now, the honor code is in effect. Any form of cheating will not be tolerated, and you could actually get expelled from school. There will be no communication at all between anyone during that test periods, typically between 12 noon and 9 p.m. I'll be available for questions prior to that, but once the test period starts, all communications will cease, and if there's any suspicious similarities between any student's test standards, answers, that would warrant an investigation. So don't even think about it. It's the worst thing you can do in college. Don't even go there. As far as your papers go, obviously that'll be your own work. Plagiarizing from any source is forbidden, and I will, like I said, give you some very specific instructions on how to paraphrase from those sources that you're learning from. And then I will actually show you how to cite your sources. You want to cite your source, well, obviously with quotes, you want to use those sparingly, but I will show you how to cite from your sources that you're paraphrasing from, as well as to cite your quotes that you're using to help enhance your, uh, your narrative there. Do not copy and paste under any circumstances. Now, as far as the grade breakdown, as I've said, the tests are 20% each for a total of 60%, and there's no extensions, no makeups, and no extra credit on any of the tests. That's extremely important. That's why you've got to keep up, pay attention, be proactive, stay engaged in the course, watch the videos all the way through, take notes, be prepared for the tests. The papers are 25% of your grade, so that's a pretty healthy chunk of your, your uh, grade there, and you, that's why you want to put a good effort into your paper and uh, make it interesting, make it informative. There will be late penalties incurred if you don't turn it in on time. Obviously, I can't accept it after on the last day of class, and this is another thing that's extremely important. There are no incompletes. I will give you plenty of uh, opportunities and plenty of time to demonstrate your competence in this course. Incompletes are uh, much like these other things here. They don't. They just don't work, and they're not fair to the other students. That's probably the the biggest problem on these things here as well. Okay, so um, participation, as I said, 15% of the grade. Now let's look very quickly at the schedule. As I said, in general throughout the class, the deadline to, po to respond to each form will be 9 p.m. each Monday and Wednesday evening. Any assignment that I uh, give you, that will need to be posted by 9 p.m. on the day that it's due. Again, it will be on Mondays and Wednesdays. Those will be our class days. Tests will also be given either on a Monday or Wednesday, as you can see on the, the schedule here. And the deadline to complete the test, of course, will be 9 p.m. on that day that it's scheduled. Tests will be posted usually by around 12 noon. As far as the schedule goes, this is what we're doing today. Introduction to the class, going through the syllabus. Next lecture will be chapter one, introduction. So you want to get the book in as quickly as possible. Then I'll be talking a supplemental lecture here, Evolution of the Modern Brain and the Modern State. This sets a good kind of historical baseline as far as what we're gonna be getting into here for this first section. Chapter two is the democratic ideal. I will have that list of paper topics posted by then so that you could start looking at those and start thinking about a topic that you want to write about. Then I'll post another supplemental video lecture on democratic culture and democratization. Then I will post a video that's preparing you ahead of time for the class paper. As I said, the paper won't be due until the end of the semester, but this will give you a little bit of heads up on how to start preparing for your paper uh, as to what to expect on your paper. It's better to go ahead and get that out up front, and then you'll have this video to uh, use as needed, but it will be required for you to watch that day. It will be treated just the same as a video lecture because I'll have a discussion forum posted for you to respond to as well on that particular one. Chapter three will be liberalism. And I'll be splitting that up because I want to talk about the Constitution 
as well in a little bit more detail than the book goes into because Constitution is what you might call a product of liberalism. Our United States system of government is based on the philosophy of liberalism. Both parties are offshoots of liberalism. That's why we're talking about that right up front. And I want to get right into the Constitution, uh, touch on the Bill of Rights as well. Test number one, Monday, February 20th. So put that on your calendar. Then I want to talk a little bit about the scientific method. This will help you in preparing for your paper as far as how to write more objectively, analytically, with critical thinking. And the paper topic will be due on that day as well. So right after the test, you want to be prepared for this. Right after the test, the very next class, I'm going to want your paper topic. That will be in a one-half page summary. That's all we're doing first. We just want to get our topics locked in first. So all I need is a one-half page summary of what you would like to write about. And then we'll get that locked in as soon as possible. Chapter four is conservatism. Chapter five, socialism up and through Marx there. Then I'll post a video on those peer-reviewed academic journals. At that time, I'll be asking for you to give me a sample of a peer-reviewed academic journal as well. Then chapter six, socialism after Marx. Chapter seven, fascism. Then test number two will be on Monday, April 3rd. So put that on your calendar. Now the final section of the course, as you can see, I've broken them down into thirds. Be looking at chapter eight, liberation ideologies. Then I have a supplement on the politics of identity. Chapter nine is ecology as an ideology, looking at environmental issues that that have political ramifications. Then I want to post a short video on finalizing your paper because it's coming up at that point. We'll probably ask for a sample bibliography so that I can see that you've got some good sources in line. Then chapter 10, radical Islamism. Then I want to supplement that with a more open, broad look at terrorism. Then I want to look at white supremacy hate groups. Then on Wednesday, April 26th, the paper will be due. Final paper, four and a half pages. And that'll give me a little bit of cushion there to grade it and get it back to you before the end of the class. Then I'll be posting another supplemental uh, video lecture on cults and conspiracies. And then the final chapter in the book, chapter 11, Future of Ideology. And then test number three will be on Monday, May 8th. So that gives you the schedule right there. You know ahead of time as to what is going to be uh, coming at you. All right, so that's all I had today. First day of class, Wednesday, January 18th. Stay tuned for our discussion forum where I'll just be asking you to introduce yourself to the class, but stay tuned. Later this week, I'm going to post a, uh, a forum that will give you a few days for you to communicate with each other and come up with a time slot for our weekly video conference that I described earlier. Now, uh, most video lectures will probably be 35 to 45 minutes. Again, you'll want to watch those all the way through in their entirety before you go to the discussion forum to, uh, to get the full benefit of the class. So uh, feel free to shoot me an email at rlaird.bergen.edu. I'll look forward to meeting all of you in person on the uh, video conferences so that we can have a little bit more face-to-face -face interaction uh, as well. So um, I will uh, sign off for now and uh, see you in class.